Hello, my friends. In today's episode, I'm speaking with Unicorn Society member Harry Morris, who is a complete badass. He's only been in Unicorn Society for less than a year and has already more than doubled his gym business. And he's going to tell you all about how he did it in today's podcast. So if you want to grow your gym, this is the episode for you. Let's get started. <music> fitness business nerds what's up welcome to another episode of the business of unicorns podcast um, and today i'm super excited to introduce you to one of our unicorn society members uh fitness studio owner extraordinaire it's harry morris welcome to the podcast harry how's it going michael i'm so excited we get to do this i'm so thrilled to introduce you to our business of unicorns audience so thank you for spending time to record this today no you you're welcome it's uh, an honor to be on the podcast finally I know. I know you've been a listener for a while, so I'm so stoked that you get to be on the other side. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So for those of you who uh, don't know Harry already, uh, Harry is a unicorn. So you've been a unicorn society member for what? Just over a year now. Is that right? Just under. Yeah. It's a Just year. Just under in, a year. Not even weeks. yet. Oh, yeah, wow. Okay. So such a such a fresh little unicorn. Um, and <laughs> Harry is the owner and director of a place called Fitness Studio 46 in the UK. I'll let him say more about it in a few seconds. But I'm so excited to introduce all of you to Harry because the, since the day I met Harry and uh, he operates the gym with his um, brother Hugo, I've been so impressed by their commitment to having high integrity, their commitment to standing out in their community, their commitment to networking, their commitment to creating great marketing and social media content. Y'all are so great at so many things. And I, I'm so thrilled to be able to pick your brain and share some of the things you're amazing at with our audience today. But let's get the party started, Harry, by just tell, tell the listeners a little bit about Fitness Studio 46. Where is it? Who do you focus on? Go for it. Yeah, awesome. So we are in the UK, as you said, we are slap bang in the middle of the UK. Um, for any American friends who have ever watched Peaky Blinders, I'm pretty much <laughs> like right right from that area. Um, yep. So yeah, we, we're next to a Peaky Blinder pub, which is great. Um, and we help with uh, busy professionals. So we're specifically sort of working with people who have professional careers in maybe accounting, law, um, management experience and we're generally doing small group personal training um, as our main offering and we work with as many as five people at one time great yeah I love it and I love that focus specifically on working professionals you seem to have a lot of them in your in in your market which is fantastic um, and actually let's kind of start there let's actually maybe start our conversation at marketing I know you've done a lot since we've started working together less than a year ago to really transform your marketing and your approach to marketing. I know when we first met your marketing, I say this without judgment, with all love in my heart, your marketing was a little bit like we're for everyone. Right. And yeah. so can you just talk a little bit about like your, what your, your original approach to marketing and then, then we'll talk a little bit about how you've changed it. Yeah. Well, I think that was pretty much our tagline was like, we, I think it used to be, um, we, we help anybody get in shape and stay in shape was our tagline. Um, yeah. and by trying to appeal to everyone, we were essentially appealing to no one. Um, yeah. so we've really had to narrow our focus on who exactly we help. Um, and then really kind of learn the language, the pain points, how to communicate with that avatar. Um, and we've built our marketing out from there. Yeah, and now you're speaking like a true marketer now. So, you, you know, you really turned a corner. Yeah, and I just want to start by like kind of normalizing that because I think a lot of gym owners when they first open, they want to be everything to everyone because they don't want to say no to any business. They don't want to give the impression that they're turning people away. Uh, they want to give the impression that they're really inclusive, welcoming environment for everyone. So like, I want to fan the flames of that impulse, right? We want our spaces to be inclusive, welcoming spaces. And our marketing is different, right? The most successful marketing is specific messages to specific people who have a specific problem for which we have a specific solution. So you've worked hard to get much more specific. So can you just kind of walk me and you know our listeners through, like, what did you do to figure out who your avatar is and learn to speak their language? Well, the credit has to go to, to Unicorn Society. Um, we were, we're encouraged to read Story Brand. Um, mm -hmm. which I know has been mentioned on the podcast a lot, but um, that sure. really, yeah, it really helped us just narrow our focus, um, create the brand script of the avatar that we're trying to help. Um, and then we funneled that through the website, any social media that we put out, um, 
any banners that we produce, flyers, anything um, marketing related, we're always speaking to that avatar. Yeah, yeah. And um, for those of you I know, like 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 you said, Harry, we've talked about this on the podcast a million times, but I really can't recommend it enough. I mean, the, the whole point of Story Brand is to tell the story of your business, making the client the main character, right? The client is the person who's at the center of your story. You're really just kind of a guide or a Sherpa. And so I think that what happens is that oftentimes when we start a gym, we talk, tell a story about us. We tell our story as the owners and the founders and the trainers. Uh, and really we want to flip that script to make sure that all of our marketing material centers the client. So kind of who you started to say this a little bit in your intro, but how do you think about who your avatar is these days and how do you try and get their attention? So really, I think it started with looking at the commonalities between everybody we already had, because I think yep. even accidentally, we kind of just gravitated towards people who had professional backgrounds. Um, I think we're, we're located in a business park, so that probably had something to do with it. And yep. Mining Hugo's kind of personal nature, uh, I think it does lend itself towards busy professionals, uh, it just in the way that we speak and, and our sort of manner. Um, so that market came about kind of organically. It was really a case of stepping back and looking at who we had in the gym and realizing what the common denominator between those people were. And I think, does that answer your question? Was there a part two to yeah. that one? No, I think that's a great one. So once you figured out like, okay, these are the kind of people we're serving. Here's the common denominator. Walk me through, what did you do next? So from there, it was just thinking, well, where do these people exist? Um, so we started, we, we joined our local chamber of commerce, mm -hmm. um, went networking, started introducing ourselves to these businesses. I think I sent over 800 emails to local businesses, um, wow. reaching out to them and offering to come in and speak on health and fitness and, and, um, lunch and learn. Um, and that was really the main emphasis was actually kind of, uh, shaking hands and kissing babies. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you're running for mayor. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love that so much right? because I think that's a question that people often just skip right over is they might know who their avatar is, but they skip that really next important part. Well, okay, well, where are they? Where, where are the eyeballs of our avatar on a regular basis? Where do they work? Where do they shop? Where do they play? Where do they hang out? Where do they vacation? What are the, what magazines do they read? What, you know, where do they go in our neighborhood? Right. I mean, all of that tells you what your marketing strategy should be. Right. Certainly yeah. we can, you know, even if you're just targeting them through digital ads, you need to know their hobbies, the things they care about, where their eyeballs are. So you can even target them appropriately. But if you're targeting them out, out in the real world, it's even more important. Um, I know we are going to maybe circle back to this later, but maybe let's talk about it now because you mentioned your chamber of commerce. I know this is yes. something that I think is kind of an underutilized strategy that more people should use. And you've had a lot of success with this. And pretty much every market I know in the US, and I think most in the UK, have a chamber of commerce, some local organization that's responsible for kind of business networking and business business health in the area and you've had an yeah. amazing connection with viewers can you just talk people through like what what happened there yeah so um it was actually a tip i picked up from um steve krebs um mm -hmm. on it was on the yo grow your gym podcast um mm -hmm. but he said that he built his he really built his gym foundation from the chamber of commerce he said that he offered free training to the five most powerful females in in his chamber yep. um so really that got me thinking um, about getting involved with it. So I took on a membership as a startup, um, got out into the networking circles. They, they host regular meetings. Um, and it was just a case of introducing myself to um, not only the businesses, but the team who run the chamber. Um, mm. And I managed to really form good relationships with the relationship managers at the chamber. Um, so they're connected, they're connected to hundreds of businesses. Um, so if you need an introduction made, then they're the people who make it. Um, and the, I think it's my local chamber is 800 businesses divided between four relationship managers. Um, and I have a very strong relationship with three of those four. Um, mm. so really that, that opened the door, um, to getting in front of these businesses, but specifically, I actually ended up working with those relationship managers, you know, they got health and fitness advice from us and wrote them programs and um, yeah, it's continued to grow from there. Yeah, that's so amazing, Harry. I think it's such a, a great kind of grassroots local strategy. And for listeners who have a chamber of commerce, why not start there? And if your avatar, like Harry's, is is working professionals, then why not talk to the people who knew who know literally every 
business owner in your community, right? The Chamber of Commerce, the whole point, the reason for them to exist is to be super connectors, right? That's the that's the function of the organization is to be super connectors between different business owners, business owners and resources in the community. And so, you know, what a fantastic way to insert yourself right into the kind of the belly of the business beast in your community. Uh, and now that you're yeah. you know, really connected with the people who are at the center there, they can connect you anywhere you want to go. Yeah. And I think really it's going in with, I went in with a very specific mindset um, of how mm. I was going to interact with the chamber. Um, and I noticed a lot of businesses they're in there just, it's like a, a promotion. Like they're just in there talking about how great they are. Just pitching um, themselves. Yep. Just pitching themselves left, right and center. And they're not giving anything. Um, so yep. I went in with a very big give mentality. Like I, it was um, doing lunch and learns, offering to do speaking um, parts for I actually spoke at the uh, Chambers um, AGM because um, they wanted to have a health and wellness focus. So it was really just giving of my time, giving of our, our resources at Fitness Studio. And I think that's really what cemented that relationship, just going and seeing what value we could offer as opposed to what we're going to get from the Chamber. Yeah. That's amazing, Harry. And I think, you know, for anyone doing any kind of networking, what a great men mindset to start with, which is I'm just going to go in <clears throat> with the energy and attitude of like, I'm going to give what I can. And what, what I'm going to give is maybe some of my time to speak at events. I'm going to give maybe some of my time to do some lunch and learns and teach what I know. I'm going to use some, maybe offer up my, my gym as a resource to the community, people who want a place to come meet or gather, right? There's plenty of ways that we can just offer ourselves up. And, you know, you're going to get very popular very quickly with that kind of attitude, right? You get very popular very quickly when you offer to give free lunch and learns or free talks. And that time comes back in the form of clients. I know you've already gotten a lot of business from this strategy. Can you just talk a little bit about your ROI on this so far? Yeah, so I need to do the specific sort of calculations. Um, one mm -hmm. of the things we're improving is monitoring more key performance indicators, but um, <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I mean, I've wrote a lot of programs for the chamber team because they don't all mm -hmm. necessarily live local to the gym. Um, yep. And that was actually subsidized by the president of the chamber. So any team of the chamber um, any team member of the chamber, they got a 50% subsidiary on any health and fitness, um, anything they wow. wanted to do for their health and fitness with us. So it was really good for them. It was good for us. It reflected well on the chamber. Um, so we wrote a lot of programs for people just kind of consulting with them. Um, we've had two business owners join. Um, I think I've had, I've had multiple, um, lunch and learn opportunities that probably yep. led to, <laughs> to email sure. capture I'm and sure sales down the line. Totally. Yeah, yeah, totally. We can circle back to the to the KPIs and have you back on the podcast as you continue yeah. the strategy to talk more about the ROI. But it's pretty clear already, you've had clients and opportunities and all kinds of things come from just connecting with your local chamber. Um, and all of that came from being clear about who my avatar is and where are they. And if your avatar is working professionals, they're connected to the chamber in some way. So Bravo, my friend. I think that's such a great strategy. And it's it's one that our listeners can go right right now today and, and run with. Um, let's <clears throat> switch gears a little bit because I know there's some other things I want to cover and I want to make sure we have time. Um, <clears throat> something else I know you've been working on a lot lately is that, you know, you're, you're a pretty small team. It's mainly you and your brother Hugo running the gym full time. And I know when you first joined Unicorn Society, one of your pain points was because it was just the two of you, you were kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, Kind of always talking, always meeting, always texting each other, and the, there's no real structure to your communication. So you just talk a little bit about, you know, in your early days, you know, before you met us, what did some of your communication look like kind of as a team? Yeah, um, I think the communication was there, but it was just uh, like boundaryless. <laughs> there was no boundary. <laughs> um, totally. So it was, n nothing was being documented. We're obviously like brothers so you know we talk about it at family dinners we talk mm -hmm. about it throughout the day we'd call each other anytime um you know many a time we're up till midnight just hashing out issues and and those conversations drag on and on and on um and they're not always the most amicable um so we really needed to get some clear um boundaries and structures in place um because it, you know as much as it's like a business relationship it has a huge impact on our personal lives um, our relationship as brothers so we've we've had to try and um, systemize that early I think that's probably one of the first things we did when we got to um, unicorn society was was create more of an operating system for the gym 
Yeah. Well, I just, you know, again, I want to say you all are not alone. Like, you know, it's not just Harry and Hugo who start with this challenge, right? So many people that I know that own gyms are husband and wife teams or partner teams or spouse teams, just like you. Uh, you know, so I know some that are, you know, mother daughter teams, father son teams, right? That, you know, there's so many families. Gyms can often be family businesses. And it's so easy when you start as a family business to have communication. It's just like, you know, talking to family, right? And as you said, yeah. I'll use your words, it's boundaryless, right? It's just like, we're kind of always talking about business, you know, at breakfast, at lunch, family gatherings, you know, um, and, and that can work for a little while, right? That can work for a little while when you're getting up to speed and you're just opening, but it doesn't work for long, right? It starts to, it starts to real. So what were some of the pain points you were experiencing with that style of communication? <laughs> um they they were pretty severe um like like you say at, at times you can kind of just get by like that um we're fortunate that we have a tr me and hugo have a very close relationship as brothers um he's he's yeah. four and a half years younger than me so it's definitely been like that big brother little brother um it's kind of set up but as he's grown and become you know his own independent man and it, you know, yeah. he doesn't want to be told what to do by me all the time. It had to be more <laughs> collaborative. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. So it was kind of, I think the pain points were we didn't have clearly established um, roles. Um, mm. Again, there were no boundaries in when we talk about work. Um, and it very much, I think the main pain point became that we were, it was more a case of, well, what have you done? Have you spent enough time on this? You know, how, how long you've been on the PlayStation? How, like what you've been out all weekend? <laughs> like those, those were the sorts of conversations we were having. Whereas the position we've got to now is more a case of there's clear um, stuff that needs to be done and it's just a done or not done conversation. And then it's more of a supported solution if things aren't being done. Um, mm -hmm. And most of the time things are done because we're just clear on, on expectations. Yeah. Well, and bravo. I mean, it's, it's, it's so easy to get stuck in that original place of just like, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. And I'm going to, you know, shame you for taking too much time off. And I'm going to, I'm going to be mad at you because I saw you playing video game. You know, it's so easy to get stuck in that place. And the fact that you all turned it around and created some structure and boundaries is huge. And I think it starts with what you mentioned, which is clear roles and responsibilities. Right. It's one of the things that often happens in small businesses is that because it's such a small team, people don't take time to really define what is my job that is unique from what you do? What is your job that is unique from what I do? And where do we overlap? You know, who gets to decide what, you know, what lane are we each sprinting in? Because if not, we're just kind of running in each other's way all the time. We're all in each other's business. And that's so inefficient. Yeah. yeah. And so um, I know that, you know, when you joined Unicorn Society and Unicorn Society, we run a version of the Entrepreneur Operating System or EOS. We have our own version called Frameworks for Unicorns. So I know that that's what you run those days, but without going through the whole system, can you just talk a little bit about what is the pace and the structure of your communication these days? Yeah, so the biggest thing that changed um, as a result of the EOS and, and the Unicorn uh, mission control document um, yep. was introducing a weekly meeting, um, yeah. a clear, structured mission control meeting uh, where the key issues are outlined. We try not to go too off topic in that meeting. Um, yep. it's set, we do it on a Monday. Um, so we actually did it on the day of this recording. Um, mm -hmm. And it just gives us a clear focus for the week. And it's a case of, what we agree in that meeting once it's done your time is your time um we're not going to start changing the plan all the time you know if something comes up we might add something in or we might um you know drop, move a task over to the next week but sure. generally it's like it's agreed upon and it's done and um it's you can do it in your own time as long as it's done by the next mission control meeting then then we're all good um yeah. so that that was a big one that's fantastic. Yeah, can you just walk through? You don't have to go through every single item, but just, what do you do in your mission control weekly meetings? Like, what what's just a few big highlights of the agenda? Yeah, so one of the biggest things is the done or not done section. So we look mm -hmm. at we just review last week's tasks and we talk about um, whether they were done or not. Um, and then if not, it's trying to just approach it with a well, what can we do to help um, rather yep. than a you know just get it done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, totally. <laughs> So, so that's huge. And, um, I think the, just being a more data driven, mm -hmm. um, so we check the weekly dashboard and it just highlights what the key areas of concern are. So, you know, are we getting enough leads through the door? Have we collected any emails? What's our conversion rate like, um, what's our, what's our retention or attrition like, and then that just keeps our focus narrow. 
um, week to week. And then a, a final sort of big key point of that um, document is the quarterly projects. Yep. So um, obviously we do quarterly planning with Unicorn Society and it's a case of when we check in on what's happening every week, it's, it keeps our focus narrow because we're always working on what our quarterly projects are. And um, rather than our past approach, which was, we just need to fix everything now. (laughs) Yeah, totally. (laughs) I love that. Yeah, that's so much without, in the absence of like some structured planning process, every, uh, every business's attitude about problems is let's try and fix everything right now. And that's such a recipe for disaster. (laughs) It's such a recipe for burnout. It's such a recipe for confusion, right? And, and constant disappointment that we can never fix it all. Like we have to, yeah, have to eat this elephant one bite at a time. And so good for you. I thought that, I think that's a great overview. So just repeating back what I heard is there's a focus on big picture quarterly projects that get defined Mm -hmm. once a quarter. There's a focus on uh, key metrics. So looking at a dashboard of like, what are the numbers of the business? Leads coming in, emails gathered, revenue, et cetera. Every week you're looking at that. And then looking at important tasks. Are the tasks done or not done? Are we spending our time on the most important things? And when you're not, It's really a conversation about, okay, well, what do we need? What kind of support do you need? It's not about shame and blame. It's really just about, okay, well, it's not done. Let's talk about what got in the way and how do we get it done this week? That's not always easy because sometimes there's real frustration, but the fact that that's the intention you're going in with is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, And so since you've been doing those, those weekly meetings for a while now, what have you noticed that's changed in you, in the business? So between us, um, as in me and Hugo, we we are just so much happier. Um, you said about burnout, overwhelm, stress, confusion. We were dealing with all of those things. Um, so yeah, we're just much more settled in our personal lives, much happier in, at work, less confusion, less bickering. Um, we just come in, get the job done. And um, it is obviously translating into you know, tremendous growth at the gym. Um, we're just growing month on month on month you, since joining Unicorn Society almost 12 months ago. Um, you know, we, we I need to check the exact numbers, but we're over 200% up in revenue. Um, we've more than doubled the size of the business. Um, so yeah, I mean, that can be a plug for Unicorn Society. It's just, it's transformed. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not yeah. only transformed like our, our lives, um, like personally, but the business is just like brand new. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing that. I mean, it's it's a testament to how how much you and and Hugo came into Unicorn Society just ready to do the work. And y'all have been like sponges, just like, tell me what to do. I'm ready. I'm going to do it. And then you actually execute, right? I mean, none of that would have been possible if you didn't actually run with the damn ball and execute the the things. And so, you know, bravo to you. I think that's so huge. And it seems like your growth isn't slowing down anytime soon. So um, congratulations, my friend. That's amazing. Um, all right. Well, I know we have a few more minutes and there's one more topic I know we wanted to talk about maybe very briefly, which is uh, I know you recently went through a rate change and uh, increasing your rates for your clients. And this is a topic we've talked about in this podcast before, but I like talking about it pretty frequently because it's a common place where folks get hung up. We keep our rates the same for too long, which ultimately means we're just kind of eating into our profit margin. And I know you had to do a rate change that was was tough for you. It was, it was something you had to grapple with just kind of personally, emotionally, and then, of course, the logistics of it all. So can you just talk a little bit about what made you, how did you realize it was time for a rate change? And then how you, you know, brought yourself to finally do it? I think I've always known that we needed to do a rate change. <laughs> um the, the truth is we set our rates way too low when we first started. Um, mm-hmm. I think it is down to naivety, um, underconfidence, inexperience, uh, all of mm-hmm. the above. Um, so yeah, the pricing was, was broken before we started. Um, and then we've kind of just found a way to limp along. Um, you know, our gym was not profitable. Um, it was affecting our personal lives. Um, you know, I, Hugo still lives at home because we're, we're relatively young. Um, yeah. But I've since got since opening the gym, I've got married, moved out of home, um, had a baby. So yep. <laughs> the gym, it was becoming a, a real drain on our personal lives. Um, and pricing was one of the issues at the heart of it. So that it's always been in the back of our minds. But I think emotionally, I've just struggled to confront doing it. 
um, probably again, <laughs> inexperience, underconfidence, um, a bit of naivety, but I knew it's something that had to happen. So um, really, again, another unicorn society plug. It was, it was just opening that conversation up with you personally, Michael, in our calls. Mm -hmm. um, and you really just kind of challenged me to do it. Um, and I just did it and all the templates and framework and support is there. So the emails are scripted and drafted out. You have, you were giving me advice on like how much notice I needed to give clients. Um, we had, we'd already done like a, a, a small price adjustment as in right. like two months prior to this adjustment, we'd put our pricing up for new joiners. Uh, but even that wasn't enough. So I've actually had to kind of, um, relay different communications to different members some of our people who have been with us since day one um you know they've had a steeper price correction whereas some of the people who were joining fairly new their their price adjustment is smaller um and we've actually doubled our pricing for new joiners um and we've already got people joining on that new price which is literally double what we were charging and they don't they haven't even batted an eyelid um so yeah, it, it's um, going to come into full effect on May the 1st, but all the communication is out for it and it's been really well received. Um, and we've just added a significant chunk of, of revenue to the business um, without having to onboard more people. Yeah. I just want to give you applause through the podcast microphone. Just like, bravo, my friend. I know how hard and scary it can be to say, listen, all these people who've been with me for years and helped me grow this business, I don't want to raise my prices and have them leave. I don't want them, I don't want to piss them off. I, I want, you know, I want to honor, you know, the rates that we've been at. Um, and I, I really get that impulse. And I know when we first talked, that was a, a lot of where you were at as well. And not just you, every Unicorn Society member I've ever talked to <laughs> who wanted need to do a price change started at that place of just like, ah, oh, if I raise my rates too much, people are going to be mad at me and leave. Um, and sure, there might be one or two people who get mad at you and leave, but that's kind of the price of change right? You, you got to crack a few eggs to make an omelet. Uh, you know, not that yeah. people are eggs, but you get the analogy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right. And I think that, you know, the, that that's, it's, a, you're not alone. It's a tough place to start from. It's just like, gosh, I, I don't want to make people mad. And you didn't, right? I mean, you came at it with no. real thoughtfulness. You're increasing their rates, you know, gradually a little bit over time. Some people who mm -hmm. are joining right now, increasing right away, doubling. And the fact that you did the communication with such transparency and kindness. I mean, I saw it, you wrote a, you used our template, but you had a beautiful email you, you sent with a video of you explaining things to people. You're sending some reminders. So, I mean, you really structured it in a way that any reasonable client who works with you understands the value that you're providing. And that's why they're not complaining about this price increase because you really brought them along and made your thinking really transparent. Yeah. And I think it's worth sort of adding that we've had, we've had, even with the price correction, I've had more people contact me saying you're still undercharging than we've yes. had people leave. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think, I think that, like you say, I think the way in which you deliver the price increase, um, mm -hmm. I felt way more comfortable doing it, um, doing it in such an authentic way with the video of me explaining it. Um, and the way that you structure the price increase email, the, the template yeah. that you give us in BFU, it feels like it's not just begging for money. Um, <laughs> it's yep. it's definitely like a value proposition of these are all the great things we're doing. Here are the things that we want to do. These are the reasons why there's a rate increase. Um, you know, thank you for your custom and, and we look forward to working with you for years to come. Um, yeah. So really, it just felt a lot more comfortable. Um, we'd already had a big long list of things that we've added to the gym since opening um, that are huge value stacks for members. Um, so we really did have a big long list of, of things and justifications really for that price increase. Yeah. Well, bravo again, my friend, and congratulations. I mean, the fact that you've you know more than doubled in a year, um, and you've you know gotten really clear on your roles, responsibilities. You got less stress. You got more profitable. Rates are up. Rates could be up even more, which I know we're going to work on next year, <laughs> and, or maybe this year now that we're in twenty twenty three. Um, and so I just want to say like a big congratulations to you and and Hugo, if you're listening, Hugo, congratulations, um, and just thanks for coming to share all your great tips and wisdom on the podcast today, because I think you know all the work that you've been doing is just a real testament to just following the best practices, getting some outside help and support can be valuable. And I know part of this podcast has been like a, a unicorn society commercial, which we weren't <laughs> intending, but, but I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. So um, for people who want to learn more about Fitness Studio 46 or find you on the internet, you know, how do they find you, Harry? 
So you can follow me personally um, on Instagram. It's my old handle, but it's um, HMPT, which stands for Harry Morris Personal Trainer Coaching. So nice. HMPT Coaching, all one word. So you can just DM, DM me on there. Um, you can see sort of the catalog of content we've created on that profile. Um, but really um, following the gym account is is a good idea. So it's fitness underscore studio four six. Um, we're working really hard on just getting the right sort of content out at the moment. So if anyone's a gym owner and you're just looking for a little bit of inspiration, you can check it out. Um, yeah. And I have a podcast as well, um, which yep. is called Double, Bu Double Busy and Fit. Um, so that could be somewhere to look for. But really, um, you know, it's more health and fitness focused as opposed to the business side of things. So. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, listeners, go go follow Harry, go follow Hugo, go listen to their podcast. They do a great job of putting out a lot of content that's really valuable to their core avatar, which is all of you should be doing as well. So use them uh, for some inspiration. Um, this has been awesome, Harry. Thank you for your time. Listeners, if you found this enjoyable, please leave me a five-star review everywhere you listen to your podcast and email me, michael at businessunicorns.com. Let me know who you want me to talk to next or what topics you want me to cover next. Many of you have been emailing me more and more recently, which I really appreciate. That's where a lot of topic ideas come from. So please keep it up. Um, and thanks again for the great conversation, Harry. Really appreciate it. Thank you.